Today we are talking about writing root position triads and how we would part write from one root position triad to another. We're going to focus in on four part writing, soprano, alto, tenor, bass. We're going to talk a little bit about three part writing, but we're not going to, not going to go too much into that just because that is not anywhere near as common as four part. So when writing a four part triad, Keep in mind that triad means that there's only three notes, yet we have four voices singing. So obviously, something needs to happen. First off, this is your first choice. First choice is you're going to write a complete chord, meaning you're going to write a root, a third, and a fifth. And make sure you have all of those. And then, you're going to double the root. And that's a rule. In a root position triad, double the root. Say that, let's say that to ourselves again, in a root position triad, double the root. Now that, now that we've done that, now let's start talking about exceptions. That's how quick the exceptions happen. There's two ways that we can have an exception. And I'll, I'll actually write it like this. So, and our exceptions, one, two. So in the very final chord of a piece, or maybe even a larger section, you can have three roots and one third, tripled root and a third. The reason that works is that it's a final cadence and having lots of the root of a lot is, makes it sound really relaxed and, 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 and restful. And when you're leaving out the fifth, which is what you're omitting, why, why leave that out as opposed to the third? Well, the third is going to tell you whether a chord is major or minor. The fifth is not needed to tell you whether a chord is major or minor. It's still a perfect fifth regardless. So the perfect fifth is not critical in determining major or minor. Therefore, it's easier to be left out. There's other reasons as well that have to do with where it is in the overtone series. Because it, is, it occurs so early on in the overtone series, the human ear supplies a perfect fifth automatically. When you listen to music and you hear a note, if you're going to assume something, you're going to assume a perfect fifth. If it's an augmented or a diminished fifth, you'd have to hear that, otherwise you, it wouldn't come across. The ear assumes the perfect fifth without more information. So when you write a complete chord and have the fifth, you're giving your ear what it already expects. If you leave out the fifth and just have three roots and a third, the ear kind of assumes that there's a perfect fifth in there. So that's why you can leave it out. Your second exception deals with a deceptive resolution. A deceptive resolution is when you have a five chord that goes to a six chord. This is not what the human ear expects. The human ear expects a five chord to go to a one chord. And we're going to start talking about harmonic progression later. So we're a little bit ahead of ourselves right now. Now, let me say that again. The human ear expects the five chord to go to the one chord. One place that it will go to kind of be deceitful is to a six chord. And when it does go to a six chord, instead of doubling the root of the six chord, like what we say here is our rule, instead you double the third of the six chord. Let's think about why that would be. So let's take, uh, we'll stay here in this example, E flat major. Let's say we have a five chord, B flat, B flat, D, F, and we're going to a six chord, which would be C. We, we would write it like this. All right, so this is our five chord, this is our six chord. So here we have B flat, we, we, we have the notes, right? We, we write B flat, D, F, we have a B flat, we have a D, we have an F, we need to double the root, so that means we want two B flat, so B flat, B flat, D, F. We've written that chord correctly. And as you're writing things, you might wanna just list the notes you're looking to get. And usually, it's a doubled root, a third, and a fifth. However, 
when we go to our six chord here, this is five to six. That's a deceptive resolution. If we have just a six chord that's not preceded by five, it is not a deceptive resolution. So sometimes for your six chords, you're going to write root, root, third, fifth. And sometimes for your six chords, you're going to go root, third, third, fifth. It's when it's five to six that you do that second one. This applies for both major and minor, which is why here I write an uppercase Roman numeral six to indicate that it could be in either major or minor. So in this case, E flat major, a six chord, deceptive resolution, I need a C, an E flat, a G, that's my complete chord, and I double the third of the chord. So here I have my C, my E flat, two of them, and a G. So that is my how you would part write a deceptive resolution. Now, why double the third? Well, go back to what I just said a second ago. We expect five chords to go to a one chord. So a B flat major triad, five chord, would normally go to an E flat major triad, which is the one chord. In an E flat major triad, one chord, what note would you double? The root, which is the E flat. Hey, look, even though we're going to an unexpected chord, we're still doubling the expected note. Let me demonstrate on what that sounds like. So, we're in E flat major. Our first chord we have is a five chord. We would expect to go to, instead, So you can hear how the one, the first one I played, sounds, everything's normal, everything's doing what it's expected. The other one doesn't sound bad, it's just unexpected. It's deceptive. So that gives us our rules, and we start off with two exceptions right off the bat. But you'll notice that exceptions occur for specific reasons. It's not like we just randomly say, oh, and here we're going to leave out the fifth, and here we're going to double the third. There's very specific reasons on why we have those exceptions. So this is going to be important for you to remember as we start trying out some of these exercises. Before we go there, in three-part textures, soprano, alto, bass, first thing you should try to do is write a complete chord, root third fifth. However, if it would make sense, you could omit the fifth. That's allowed. And now when I say, if it makes sense, what is a valid reason? What counts as making sense? And the answer to that when we're talking about this is the part writing, the voice leading. If the integrity of the melody, which is something we've talked about previously, to create a good melodic line with a focus point and, and a nice variety of conjunct and disjunct motion, if the voice leading is much better by omitting the fifth, that's a good reason. If it isn't, then that's not a good reason. So your first go-to thing, step rather, would be to write a complete chord. And then if your melody would be better, improved, if you left off the fifth and went to having two roots and a third, go ahead and do so. When we omit the fifth, then the question is, what do you double? And it would be, you would have root plus root plus the third. You wouldn't have two thirds, you'd have two roots. All right. Here's some options because the reason we're starting to get more complicated is you have more options now. When I say, earlier on when I say write out a D major scale, there's no creativity, there's no options, there's only one right answer. Here, 
if I were to say write a five chord going to a one chord in the key of C major, four parts, you have many options. Just how you write the five chord alone, you have numerous options. Here's one example, G, D, G, B. Do we have the complete chord? G, D, B? Yes. Did we double the root? Yes. So, G, G, B, and D. We have all those notes. Those look like sixes. They're not sixes, those are Gs. We have all those notes accounted for. So we wrote our five chord correctly. Other things we have to be careful about, are they in the appropriate range? Yes. Is there any voice crossing? No. Do we have appropriate spacing? Yes. So there's all these things that we've talked about before that you need to make sure are happening. But you can see all those things are correct here. We look over here. Here we have from bottom to top G, B, D, G. We have our notes again. But you can see that it's a different voicing. But it is also correct. And we'll go over here from bottom to top G, B, G, D. Yet another voicing. That's correct. So, right there is just three possible voicings for a G major triad. Now, how do we resolve this chord, five going to one? How do we get our voices to move in such a way that we don't break any of the rules? And again, what we talked about previously, no parallel fifths, no parallel octaves, no parallel unison, no leaps that are unacceptable, like augmented and diminished, uh, mainly augmented leaps, and certain other types of leaps, like of a seventh. There's a bunch of things that we have to avoid and remember to avoid. So, in this example, it's a five chord root position, going to a one chord, so we know that the bass is going to do that. G to C. You could say, well, could it jump up to the C? Yeah, it could. That's, in the, that's at the very top end of the bass range. But let's give ourselves a little, little room here. We know that the notes we want are C, E, G. That's our triad. And we're doubling the root. So two Cs, an E, and a G. C, C, E, G. So it's, we spelled the chord correctly. Spelling the chord correctly is step one. Now let's see how the voices move. The soprano voice moves up by step. We had no choice in this. If you look and remember, the B natural is a tendency tone. It is scale degree seven in the key of C major. Scale degree seven is called the leading tone. The leading tone wants to go to tonic, which is what we call scale degree one. So scale degree one, uh, scale degree one equals tonic. Scale degree seven is the leading tone. When you have a ten, the seventh scale degree in one of the outer voices, outer voices meaning the soprano or the bass, it must resolve to tonic. So, since this B natural is our leading tone, it must resolve up to the C. So, it goes up by step. Our alto stays the same. It maintains the common tone. So, common tone is saying, well, what notes are in common? Well, both of these chords have a G in them. That is the common tone. Some chords will have one common tone. Some will have zero, some will have two. I will let you know right now a little hint. Common tones are your friend. They will make your life easy. Keep your common tone, I mean friends, close. If you have an opportunity to maintain a common tone, you should try to do that. That should be your first instinct because if you remember, the type of motion where you can never have problems is oblique. So if you have a common tone being maintained and other voices are moving, you know you'll never have a problem. 
it'll be what we call smooth voice leading because the notes being kept the same. Yes, you run the risk of being boring. I know. But right now, we're not trying to be exciting. What we're trying to do is understand how to do something that is smooth voice leading, that follows all the rules, sounds like good full harmonies. After we've mastered that, then we will sink our teeth into how to be creative and exciting and interesting. Don't worry, you won't lose those things. The alto maintains the common tone. The tenor moves up by step. Well, as a word of warning, we have a voice moving up and another voice moving up. We better make sure that this is not one of those unacceptable parallel intervals, right? We don't want parallel fifths, we don't want parallel octaves. D to B is an interval of a sixth. Well, sixes are great. Parallel sixes are even better. Just ask John Dunstable back in the back in the day. Parallel sixes sound wonderful. So we have the upper voices moving by common tone, step, and step. And that's how we resolve this. And it's a great way to resolve the chord. Let's listen to it. I will arpeggiate so you can hear all those individual voices. satisfying resolution. Now let's take a look at our next example. Here's another voicing of the five chord. So you'll notice that here the G was maintained as a common tone, but here we don't. But Dr. Brellox, you said, maintain the common tone whenever, whenever possible. Yeah, if you want to make your life really easy, you should. There are options. And sometimes, for voice leading purposes, you might have to explore those. So it is possible here that that fifth, or the root rather, the root of the five chord can go down a third. What you will notice, and the reason I use the word similar here, is that all of the upper voices move in similar motion. You'll notice that they Soprano, alto, and tenor all move down. Well, we better hope there's no parallels in there, right? B to D, that's a third, so we're fine. B to G, that's a sixth, we're going to be fine. Notice that they, all the upper voices move down, and the bass goes up. Contrary motion. This is actually very critical. If You're, you'll solve a lot of problems by having contrary motion with the bass. So that's another one of those kind of tips that will be helpful. We have step down here and a, a leap of a third down there. But none of those leaps create parallel, unaccepted parallel motion. So we have another example. Again, we have our G, G, B, D. So we spell the chord correctly. Here we have our C, C, E, G. So we have that, both our spelling and our doubling are correct. Let's compare and listen. We have sound the same as this. This one would work very well at the very end of a phrase because we have 7-1, scale degree 7-1, makes it sound very fine. This doesn't. This would sound good in the middle of a phrase. Keep in mind that as you're writing you want to have options. In the middle of a phrase you don't want things to come to a complete stop. At the end of the phrase you do. Here's another option. Here we have stepwise motion in one voice, we maintain our common tone here, and we make a leap in another voice. Alright? So this one had 
common tone, two steps. This had everything moving in similar motion. This one has a leap, a common tone, and a step. So you can see that there's so many options. Let's take a listen to this one. We have going to So these are different methods, different techniques that can be used to, to part right. So let's actually do some of this. Here's our example. We have a, a figured bass line written out and a voicing to start off. Step one, step one. A Roman numeral analysis. We are in the key of A minor. How do I know? Well, I see these sharps here, which indicate the third of the bass is being raised. Right now, we're only dealing with diatonic harmonies, so if we can't be in C major, we're going to have to be in A minor. Also, it starts on an A, and it ends on an A. So when you're looking to determine the key, look at the first note, look at the last note, Usually it'll start with a one chord, maybe a five chord. It'll almost invariably end on a one chord, maybe a five chord. But those are your two options. Usually it starts on one or five. Not always, there's exceptions. And if you see anything that looks like a raised leading tone in the middle, then you definitely know that you're in a minor key. So with that, A, nothing under that, that's a one chord, five chord, one chord, six chord, four chord, five chord, one chord. These are all root position triads. So I just look at the note. A, that's one in the key of A minor. E, that's five in the key of A minor. We did that already. And F is a six chord. And I'm writing the appropriate upper or lowercase Roman numeral because I've memorized that. So I know all six chords are major in A minor key and the four chords are minor in a minor key. So keep in mind what we've talked about before and make sure you have memorized the different sonorities so you can write the appropriate upper or lower case Roman numeral. After you, I've done that, I have my first voicing, I then need to come up with what I'm going to do for my five chord. So I've done my Roman numeral analysis. Step two is I want to write letter names for the chord that's coming up. So here, the chord would be E, G sharp, B, and since it's a root position triad, I need two E's. I have already have one, it's in the bass, so I'm going to go like this and I'm going to cross it off. After you write, as you start to put it on the staff, cross off the note you have. Now, next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to look for common tone. Look for common tone. Well, there's E's in both chords, so I could keep this E right here and maintain it. Let me do that. Let me maintain the common tone. Because I said common tone is your friend. Let's try to make our lives easy. Then I cross it off. Now I knew that I, now I need a G sharp and a B. So step four. I look and see what can I move to by step. And I have to look at both voices and say, how can I make the least amount of leaps? Okay, move by step. Least number of leaps. So it doesn't matter if one voice can move by step, if the other voice has to make a big leap. I want the, the, the least amount of leaps between the two voices. Well, this C, 
can either go to a G-sharp or a B. Well, a G-sharp would be a leap, a B would be a step. Well, that's, that seems reasonable. This A has to go to either a G-sharp or, or a B. G-sharp is a step, B is a step. Well, what am I going to do? Well, obviously I'm going to move this to the G-sharp and this to the B because I can move this. This one has the option of step to either one, but this one can only go to the B by step. Other than that, I would have to leap, and I want the least number of leaps. So that is how I'm going to choose to do that. Now, it goes back to a one chord. You know, I'm going to be boring. If it worked before, it'll probably work again. I'm just going to move it right back to where we started. I mean, that's a big, I'm going to double check, is that more than a compound perfect fifth? It's not. It's a compound perfect fifth. So that's the biggest distance we can have. It works. If it works, I'm moving forward. Here, sixth chord. The notes in my sixth chord in the key of A minor are F, A, C. It's not a deceptive resolution. One to six is not deceptive, therefore I'm going to double the F. I already have one, so I cross it off. Can I maintain a common tone? Well, interestingly enough, both the A and the C are common tones. So if I can maintain those, C, A, and then move this to an F, does that work? Do I have any parallels that are problematic? Well, these are staying the same, so this is a fifth going to, uh, to an octave. That's okay. That's, a pro that's fine. So you see how I use common tones? And it's just making everything go very, very smoothly. I now have my four chord. I figure out I need a D, F, A. I need two Ds. I cross one off because I already got it. Common tones. Well. That's not a common tone. That is, that is. So if I maintain the F, I maintain, I cross it off. I maintain the A, cross that off. Then I need a D. Look, I can step up to a D right there in the soprano. I did it. Once again, common tones making my life so easy. And then finally, I get to a five chord. We knew E. E, G sharp, B, we have one of those E's, I can cross it off. Well, here, there are zero notes in common. Zero notes in common. But I want to say, move by step. Well, let's see. This D could move up to the E, that's by step. The A could move up to the B, that's by step. The F could move up to the G, that's by step. You'll notice I'm not writing these. The D could go up by step. So everything could move by step. Right, Dr. Rolex? That's great. That's perfect. We want to do the least number of leaps. Yes, but we can't break the rules. And if I were to have an E here, let me just, that's a D, that's a D, that's an E, that's an E. That would be parallel octaves. That is unacceptable. So we know we cannot go to this E. This D cannot go to that E. Unacceptable. Well, how about this D to A and going to the B by step, right? D to A is a fifth. E to B would also be a fifth. Parallel fifths are unacceptable. Well, we can't do that. This F to the G, well, it's going to be a G sharp. F to G sharp, wait a minute, that's an augmented second. That's unacceptable. So if you did that, you would break so many rules. Very commonly, when you have a, a root position triad that moves, the bass moves up by step, this is where all you rookies will make your mistake. Let me tell you the, the trick that will help you. If you remember this, you will always be good. When the bass moves up by step, root position, up by step, root position, take all the upper voices and move them down in contrary motion. 
So this idea that we have right here, base goes up, everything else goes down in similar motion. So we need this D, what's the next thing it could go, the closest thing, because we don't want big leaps. We have to do some leaps here, we have no choice. So the D can go down to our B. The A can go to our G sharp. And I don't forget to put the sharp in there because it's indicated in the figure base. And this F can go down to an E. And now I've written this perfectly. I've got E, E, G sharp, B, with no parallels, no augmented seconds. And I told you the special rule when the you have two root positions, whether it's four to five, one to two, three to four, any of those chord progressions, upper voices, down in contrary motion, with the bass. Problem solved. Piece of cake, just like that. So don't forget that. That there right there, that's it. that advice is like gold. Then finally, our final chord, A, A, C, E. We have the A uh, common tone right there. And here, I could go back to the, the C and the A here. I could, but this time I'm going to try to do something a little different. I'm going to put the A here. Oh, actually, no, this is not what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something a bit different. I'm not going to do the common tone because I want to end here. I'm going to do, use this other option that I mentioned where... Um, it's, it's similar to this, where one voice, it's actually, actually, I'm sorry, it's similar to this, where things move in contrary motion. I'm going to do that so that I can end on tonic and have a nicer shape to my melody. I'm sorry, I was a little creative. I couldn't resist. But Dr. Brawlox, here's a leading tone. And you said leading tones, they got to go to tonic. The answer is they do if they're in an outer voice, but that is an inner voice, so I may make an exception. Let's listen to how this sounds. Nice and slow, we have... sounds great. Four part harmony sounds great. Let's take a look at our next example. Here I'm giving you the soprano and the bass voice. Our method is very much the same. Roman numeral analysis is first, one chord, six chord, five chord, one, four, one, four, Five. It's a five chord, so I'm going to go. I'm going to put a dash, which means it's, it's the same as the chord before, to the one chord. I need two E flats, a G, and a B flat. So E flat, E flat, G, B flat. Here, crossing off the notes is even more valuable because we got two. We got an E flat. We've got a G. That means we need an E flat and a B flat. To go. What you choose for your ver very first voicing is very critical. If you make things ch hard for yourself, like you could double the E flat here and put a B flat here. You could do that. You could do this. But I like to make my life easier, and I recommend this for you as well. Give yourself a little space to work with. When you have the bass and tenor singing the same pitch, then they, gotta, they don't have much room to move around. So instead of that, I would like to put my B flat here and my E flat here. So I then can cross off my B flat, my E flat. Then, when I move on to my next chord, I know I need C, C, E flat, G. I've got C, I've got G. I need E flat, and I need C. So, I look for my common tone. Well, there's an E flat common, so I can keep do that and I can move by step in the tenor. Boom, 
I love that. That's smooth right there. Least number of leaps, I did a common tone and a step. I then go to my five chord, which is B flat, another B flat, because I'm doubling the root, D and F. I've got B flat, I've got B flat, I now need D and I need F. Well, I could put the F here and the D here. Why would I not want to switch those two around? Well, because if C goes to the F, that's a leap. So by putting them like this, I can have them both move by step. Here I'm going back to my one chord. I need an E flat, another E flat, a G and a B flat. So I could put the E flat here, or I could put a B flat. That's a big leap. I probably don't want to do that. So I probably want to put the E flat here and this D to a B flat. So F to E flat, that's a step. D to B flat, that's a leap of a third. That's pretty good. That's pretty smooth. The other option would be to have this leap of fifth. That's, that's too much. That alone. It also presents a problem that we haven't really talked about yet, and that's called overlapping. Uh, and so overlapping is a concept that we should probably talk about beginning with our next, our next lesson. Okay? But the short, and I'll review next time, in this chord coming up, what you want to have is you don't want your alto to go higher. This alto and this, we have a question mark. Where is it going to be? You don't want it higher than the soprano was or lower than the tenor was. These are kind of like the exterior limits of where you want to go. Because once you start going over those limits, it kind of feels almost like voice crossing. Something called overlapping. And we will talk about that next time. Overlapping. Thank you, folks.